What's up, sports uniform designers? Mike with Uni Mockups with a little surprise for you today. A new pullover baseball jersey template and a video to go with it. I'm going to show you how to make this Bronx jersey using the new Diamond Flex 2.0 Photoshop template from Uni Mockups. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and drop your questions and requests for future templates in the comments down below. All right, let's jump into this template. We're going to recreate this design or get close to it. So it's uh, obviously New York Yankees inspired, uh, almost like a city edition. We'll call it the Bronx. Uh, so I've got my Bronx library up here. I got all the official colors from truecolors.net. So make sure you check them out. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link down below. Um, so we're going to try to match this as closely as we can using the blank template that you get when you order or download this template from unimockups.com. Um, so just to make it easy for us, I'm going to just kind of minimize this up here so we can kind of remember what we're going for. So we get into the template. We've got a lot of folders over here with lots of different things going on in them. Let's start first with uh, building up our colors, right? So let's, let's work on our background and our jersey colors. So we'll go down here to the background folder. And there's a few different elements in here. We've got the backlight and the shadow uh, kind of behind the jersey. We've got the floor shadow. We can turn all those things off and on if we want to. Uh, there's individual elements inside the folder. Uh, really, I just, I'm going to leave all that alone, and I really just want to change the color. So um, we've got kind of a dark gray color on the background there. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good match, but I think maybe just want to lighten it up just a little bit. Sometimes the gradients... Um, show some some alias lines in them that I'm not a huge fan of and, and the darker they are the more it does that uh, plus we really want the jersey to pop off so I'm just gonna lighten that up just a little bit um, let's look at our text we can we can change that text if we want to so the reference image says the same thing but let's go ahead and change the text go into the display text folder double click here and we can just type whatever we want so let's say the Bronx right we'll just call it the Bronx and I'm going to minimize those folders just to keep things pretty clean over here. Now let's get into our main jersey design folder. So in this folder, all of the smart objects are going to be color-coded green. So they're kind of uh, easy to find uh, and stick out as smart objects, even though you should be able to see them with this icon on them. And down here we've got the different colors. So we can change the color of the entire jersey, and we can change the sleeves independently. So um, up in my color library, I've actually got a different gray. It's, it's a uniform gray color um, that the Yankees use. So I'm going to use that. And as you can see, our sleeves are still a different color because they're still set to sort of a white color. Um, I'm going to change those to the same gray. You could also, um, if you wanted to, you could just turn those off. I'm going to set them back to white so you can see if you just turn those off, the gray color is going to show underneath. So there's a couple different ways you can achieve what you're uh, going for there. And if we look at our reference image now, um, everything's the same except for the trim, right? Um, so again looking at setting sort of our color foundation let's go and and do the trim so if we go up into our trim parts folder and we turn that on set to the default uni mockups colors but let's go ahead and and change everything so let's set our collar color to the navy blue you won't see it yet because there's some smart objects on top of it and we'll set our cuffs to the same color um, and what that does is that's going to fill in any gaps where your smart objects might not quite cover everything those base colors will sort of fill in those gaps um, so let's look at our collar design. It's There's nothing on it, right? It's just navy blue. So let's go ahead and just turn off the smart objects for the collar, and it will reveal the navy blue underneath. And then for our cuffs, all of these smart objects are linked together. So when we do the design on one, it's going to apply it to all of them. So we can go into any one of them, and we just want to change our stripe colors. So we want to leave our middle stripe white, and let's change our top and bottom stripe to the navy blue. Now, we could change these independently, or if we want to change them both at the same time, you can hold shift, and if you already have one selected and you hold shift and click the other, it's going to select both. You can do the same thing with control. Control and clicking, holding it down, will allow you to select multiple items. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on both of those and change them to navy blue, and then when we go to exit this smart object, it'll ask us if we want to save, and we do. And now we have matched the trim. So that's how we sort of set our color base and our trim color foundation for this design. Okay, so we've got our color foundation set. Now let's get into 
the design of the actual jersey. So if we look at our reference image, right, we've got a couple elements on here. We've got uh, some branding. We've got the Bronx word mark. We've got uh, the uni mockups label inside the neckline there. And then we've got our jock tag, which is also fully customizable. Um, so let's see what we can do here. Um, so over in our layers area, there's a couple different things um, that we have. One is um, our jock tag. So if we turn on the jock tag, it will appear here on the jersey. And if we open up that folder, there's a jock tag design smart object. So if you wanted to, you can go in here, you can change any of the uh, text and designs that are on here. So if you wanted to drop a different logo or something like that. So um, we've got a some text down here that's a preset if you wanted to um, customize it. You just want to turn off the uni mockups and customize this text. And let's just say the Bronx. And this isn't on our reference image, just something to sort of add in here. And then we can exit this. And another way you can exit this, by the way, um, is you can hit Control or Command S and it will save and then you can close it. Um, so now if we zoom in, we can see it accepted our changes and we've got the Bronx there saved in our smart object. And I'm just holding Control or Command if you're using a Mac uh, and Plus on the keyboard to zoom in. And if you hit Control minus, it'll zoom out. I'm going to hit Control zero to zoom all the way out. So there we have the jock tag. Now let's get into adding our actual, actually before we do the design, let's, let's change the color of the, the neck label. So um, if we go to our inside neck, inside neck label, double click on the smart object, and it's got the uni mockups logo there. You can put anything you want here, but we'll go ahead and just change that. It's a shape layer, so we can just click on one of the colors in our library to change it. I'm going to hit Control or Command S to save it. And it saves pretty quickly because there's not a whole lot of... Oh, actually it didn't save. Let's try that again. Control Command S. Now you saw it save pretty quickly up there. And now we have navy blue in there. All right. And then the last thing to do is our actual Bronx design on the front. So we're going to add that in our name and number, uh, name and number logos uh, smart object. And as you can see, when I turn that on, it, it pops up with, you know, sort of the placeholder stuff. And what we don't see is any depth to it, right? It, it looks like it's just printed on the jersey itself, sort of sublimated. Um, and whereas, oh, sorry. If we look at our reference image, we've got some really realistic depth and everything on there, just zooming in using controller command plus. You can see there it's got the tackle twill texture, right? There's some shadowing. So it looks like raised, right? Like like uh, design that's a separate piece of fabric that's been, you know, maybe heat pressed on. And so how do we do that? So that is achieved simply by turning on the design texture folder. Okay. And you can see a couple other things popped up there um, on the sleeves. And so if you have sleeve logos, there are smart objects for them here, um, but they're linked to these folders here in the embroidery folders, uh, the embroidery subfolder in the design texture folder. So if you don't have sleeve logos like we don't in our reference image, you can just turn those off and then you won't see them. And so going back to our name and number slash logos smart object, we need to make some changes, right? So we need to replicate our Bronx and we've got like a Nike swoosh on there. So I'm going to turn on the background color. I'm going to set it to the uniform gray just so we can see a little bit better. And we're going to start making some changes. Um, so first thing is let's add our Bronx logo. Um, let's go to text. And for this, I used a font that is free. It's called Varsity Block. And you can get that just about anywhere. Um, if you just Google search it, you can get that font. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a text box. Actually, you know what? Let's do this a different way. I got a, I got a better way to do this uh, because I forgot about the arch that we need. So if we look at our, if we look at our reference image, 
Okay, let's look at our reference image real quick. Our our text is arched in a way, right? Um, and we want to we want to try to you know match that for our design. So there's a couple different ways you can achieve arches or arcs on your text. You can use the native warp tools that are built in, or you can make a path and then type on that path. Um, and I think for this one, you know what? I'll just I will I'll just use the native arch tool. It looks like that's what I did here. I couldn't remember, but it looks like that's what I did on the on the reference versus typing on a you know, maybe a circle or an oval path uh, to get a little bit of a different look. So let's go ahead and go back in here. We'll get our text and I'm just going to type. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So if you come up here and you click and, and kind of drag to the right, you can make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to type the Bronx. And the first thing you'll see is this font is adding a little bit of an extra space in between the two words and I don't like that so much space. So I'm going to click right before the B and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to press the left arrow a bunch of times just to tighten that up. Okay, And I'm fine with that. I like that. Um, and now what I like to do when I'm working with text is once I have it you know, how I want it um, in terms of the type and the spacing, I'm going to right click on that text and I'm going to convert it to a shape. Now it's a vector shape that I can move around and position a little bit easier. So I'm just going to line it up with the uni mockups. And now I can minimize that. Don't really need it for reference anymore. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to edit, transform path, and warp. And I'm going to go to this warp drop down up here and I'm going to choose arch. Okay. And that looks a bit extreme, right? So if we look at the bend, if you, you can type in a number if you want, or if you just put your cursor right over there and then click it and hold it down, you can drag it to adjust the bend. So I'm going to drag it back to, I think I set this to 34, somewhere in that area. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose that. I like that. And now it's up a little higher than I want it. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. And you see how it moved a little bit to the left? I don't want it to do that. So if I hold the shift key, I've already started moving up and down, so now it's going to not let me move left and right unless I'm like really um, drastically moving the mouse. So I'm going to put it right about there. Okay, and if we look at our reference image, this text needs to be navy blue with a white stroke on it, or a white outline you might call it. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and set it to navy blue. And if we go over here to our path selection tool, we can then start setting our strokes. So if you go here first and you choose align, this is going to align the stroke to the outside of the shape. And then I'm going to choose the color and we'll choose this. That's gray. Let's choose this white color that we have in our color history. Or you can choose here, set your color to whatever you want. I actually like this one a little bit better. And then we need to set the stroke size. I'm going to start with 12. So I, I'm just going to type an extra two in there, hit enter and there you have it. That looks pretty good. Right? That looks really close to what we have. We don't have a number on the front, so I'm just going to turn off my number. Um, and Nike swoosh um, we can add right along here. If we want to, you can just Google a Nike swoosh. Uh, let me just do that on my other screen real quick. Okay, so I found a Nike swoosh image that'll work, and I'm just, I've am just copied it. I'm just going to paste it in. And obviously, I don't want all the black background and stuff, right? So. Um, and I do have one of these saved, right? I just want to show you how to kind of, you know, if you want to get one, if you don't have one and you want to get it from online or something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select that layer. I'm going to use the magic wand tool and I'm just going to select the part that I want. And then I'm going to go over here and click on this button to create a mask. And now it's masked uh, out everything around the swoosh and it's just left me with the thing that I want. Now what if it's not the right color, right? So choose the color you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to that slightly off-white color that I like, which is EA, EA, EA. Um, and then I'm going to go here to FX and I'm going to choose Color Overlay. And you can see it's, it's preset to this blue, so it changed it to blue. I'm going to click there and then choose that color that I like. Okay. And now we just have to resize it and kind of put it where we want it. So I'm going to you put it there, and I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller, kind of line it up. 
with that uni mockups logo and then turn that off and turn off our background controller command s and we could have left the background well actually we don't want to leave the background on because then the whole jersey will look like tackle twill okay uh, so it's white it was blue in my reference image so let me change it to blue click here click here control command s okay there we have it we've got our design pretty closely matched so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that reference image and we're all done so um, let's just take a look a little bit closer at some of the details on this thing right so if you zoom in you can really see all the the realistic texture we've got the mesh texture all over this thing is in 6k resolution so mesh texture all over the place uh, we've got the realistic texture on the collar you can see the tackle twill on your designs that you've placed there and the same will happen if you place them on the sleeves we've got the realistic texture on the cuffs right even on the inside so if you want to make a different design there you can do that um, or maybe you want the inside to be a solid color you can do that and then our dock tag again right you can see the stitches so everything all the, the lights and shadows uh, everything you'd expect to see on a high quality template it's a real jersey you know looks like a real throwback pullover jersey that you might see uh, so really cool design really easy to use a lot of different stuff you can do um, one other thing I want to show you before we look at the last main feature um, there are built-ins into this template that can help you make your designs a little bit faster maybe a little bit easier for example maybe you wanted to do a print on the jersey that's not part of the um, you know tackle twill logo but maybe it's just like a print uh, for example like pinstripes we've got pinstripes built in there you can turn them on on the front the side and even the back and even the sleeves um, that's our grid that's that's showing there on the sleeves but there are pinstripes built in if you wanted to add them you just turn them on and close that and you could add pinstripes to your design if you want to right or any other thing that you want to add if you want to do a sublimated design some sort of a print uh, you could do that there so I'm going to turn all that off and then I'm just going to show you one more thing okay so the last thing I want to show you on this template is a really cool feature um, called dynamic lighting and, and this is something you can use to change the lighting on the jersey itself to, to fit the scene that you're in right so maybe the light maybe you're creating a different image um, and, and you need the light to be coming from a different angle or you know just brighter whatever it is that you want to do if you turn on the dynamic lighting and you go into the folder and go into the dynamic lighting smart object you can change the light so if you go here to the hue saturation layer click on the properties and just drag this around you can dramatically or not so dramatically if you want to just do a little subtle change change the light as it's coming in and you can make all sort of adjustments in here right um, you can play around in here as much as you want to make the light match your scene but you know make that I'm gonna make a pretty drastic change I'm gonna hit control command s to save it so I'm trying to I don't know why I didn't save. I'm going to try that again. Come in here. Let's just move this over. Control S. Now it's saving. Sometimes Photoshop likes to be weird. And there you can see we've got very different light now coming in from the right side. Right? Without it, we've got that look. Now we've got a bunch more lights. Maybe you've got an outdoor scene or something like that that you want to do. So there it is the uni mockups photoshop template for the diamond flex 2.0 pullover jersey so you can do a nice throwback design if you want to so um, again make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can you know, be uh, informed of all the new stuff that we have coming out head over to unimockups.com pick this template up i'll put a link uh, down below and until next time thank you and we'll see you soon